Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brun. On this episode, we're going to be taking a look back at the debut Bon Jovi album that came out in 1984. We'll talk a little bit about the other music that was out during this year, as well as going track by track on this debut album. Lots to cover in this episode. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. So let's jump in and let's get started. Everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brown. Today I have with me Vincent LaRussa. How are you doing, buddy? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> you like that? There was no introduction this time. Yeah, no, yeah. my buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Straight to the point. Vincent LaRussa. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't be confused that I got three colors, even though they're all dark. Black, light gray, and gray, and gray. This this is a world premiere black. on the show. Yes, this is a world premiere yeah. that you're in more than just black. Yeah. Well, the shades of black, right? Isn't a gray a shade That's of black? True. So that is very yeah. true. Yes, yes. indeed. Well, you know, we've been doing, as we usually do, a lot of KISS episodes, and I texted you a few weeks ago. I'm like, you know what? April is going to be a lot of Bon Jovi news. They've got this uh, documentary coming out. Thank you. Good night. Oh, there you go. Look at that. (laughs) As you heal out the Bon Jovi album. And I was like, I think it'll be good if we do a couple of Bon Jovi episodes here. Maybe give give a look back of the debut album. Maybe do another one or two as well during the month. And uh there you have the debut album in hand right with now. The, with the with the uh, with the what with, they with the hype sticker. hype sticker. That's it. Like, yeah, you know our music world. It says three ninety nine. And, and what usually they would date it when 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 you purchase it. Four eighty eight. Right, April. Oh, look at that. April. And actually, of actually, actually, if you look at it, um, it has a, a sticker over a sticker. So that was either my doing. Uh huh. <laughs> Or if they actually reduce the price. Right, right. So wink, now, wink, wink. Right, right. So let, let me ask you this then. Uh, so this is a good way to start. Um, when do you remember first becoming a Bon Jovi fan? All right. Obviously, you got that album in 88. But do you remember when you first became a fan of Bon Jovi? Um, definitely with the Slippery Wind Wet album, mm. uh, for sure. I mean, you could not listen right. to music and and not know Bon Jovi. In uh, I remember it was in high school. So here's the interesting thing when I really thought about all this. So yeah. Slippery and One Wet came out in 86, correct? Right. Correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, this this album, the first album came out in 84. Yep. Which for some reason I thought it was 83, but then when I looked today, it was well, 84. Well, it's like January of 84, so. Right. Yeah, right at the start of the year. And then 7800 Fahrenheit was 85, correct? Right. Yep. So I remember being in high school and... Somebody asked me, and it was just when I was really starting to play drums. We had been playing, but I think, I don't know if we were still playing together at that time. And it was definitely, probably I was a sophomore, which makes sense because I was 86-ish. And um, they asked me to learn all these Bon Jovi songs other than, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, uh, you, you give, give love a bad, bad name. Because mm-hmm. remember, we that was in our, in our cover band or our first right. band. <laughs> right. We Image. played it. We right. played it. <laughs> yes. And so, then, yes, that use that very loosely, that word played. <laughs> right. And and I remember that. I think that might have been when I was exposed to 7800 and the first album. I mean, obviously, I, I had known Runaway, right. just casual listening. You know, I had known that song. But I think songs like, um, you know, like She Don't Know Me and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think I, if I remember a long time ago, I was asked right. to learn some other ones. So right. that's where I was like kind of dipping my toe into, <laughs> you know, right. the Bon Jovi pool. Which is very interesting. I guess, you know, we we always talk about this, you and I, that there was a couple of years in that early 80s time period where we kind of lost touch of each other. We were going to different mm-hmm. schools. Right. So right. for me, I actually became a fan of Bon Jovi, believe it or not, in 1983. 
And I remember very distinctively hearing the song Runaway on WAPP. There you go. 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Very nice. 488, ironically, with another sticker on top of a sticker. Right, so. There you go. So so, so you definitely became a fan in 88. Right? So I probably bought these probably together. Together, right. together. Same right. type sticker. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. Whereas no, no, I, no. I wouldn't say I became a fan in 88. No. No, of course, we no, saw no. Bon Jovi in concert in April of 87. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, yes. and so I had already was a fan of that, right. of that, right. um, of that record. But as you know, back then, until I was actually be able to make more than, you know, $14 a week, right. I wasn't really, but I was listening to your records. I would go over right. your house and, and you had all these records. And that is exactly oh. my point is that I got that first Bon Jovi album in the summer of 84, actually. Mm -hmm. Right, because I knew Runaway, because they played it on the local radio station, WAPP, right? Uh, all right, we don't need every Bon Jovi album coming out. Focus. <laughs> I, want, I want to see when if this had a sticker on it, but this one actually does not. No. Really oh, you know good. why? Because this is a, hit the microphone, this is a Columbia House or RCA, okay. whatever. There you go. For those who don't know what that is, you remember the record club for yes, a penny? Yes, 12 for a penny. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right, if you take out one more freaking Bon Jovi album, I'm going to wow. just disconnect it. No, anyway, so what I'm saying you know, or trying to say here is that um, I know I was very aware of the song Runaway during the 1983. Um, I actually purchased the Runaway 45 when it first came out in, I guess, January of 84. And I remember at that time, you know, like, oh, the, the, the flip side, Love Lies, if I remember right, it was the flip side. I remember thinking, oh, that, that's a good song. Not I'm still too young to realize that that meant there was an album coming out. Right. But I was very, very aware of who Bon Jovi was in early of 84. And then that summer, I went to Florida to visit my grandparents and they had MTV. I did. not As you know, we did not have MTV back in Brooklyn at that time. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing the video for She Don't Know Me on MTV and I was like, ooh. This band has another song. That must mean there's a finally the light bulb went off. That must mean there's another album. And I purchased the first, the debut album, or I got it as a gift, or whatever, that summer. So I was on, the, I'll say, the Bon Jovi train from pretty much day one almost, right? Um, from like I said, I, I knew the song Runaway before the album was out, right? So mm -hmm. I was there day one. And I'll even say this: I remember seeing Kiss in concert in what november of 84 on the animalized tour and i had read in magazines that bon jovi was opening up for kiss and i was so excited i'm like oh my god what a great double build is going to be bon jovi kiss i love that bon jovi album i was mm. so excited i show up for the concert and this band i did not know at the time queens opens up and i was like mm. What the hell? I had brought a tape to record Bon Jovi because I was into them. And I was like, what the hell? What's this Queensryche band? I was so pissed off that night. I've obviously come to learn that Bon Jovi was only opening up the shows over in Europe. But at that time, mm. I didn't know that. Um, but my point being that entire first album cycle, I was a Bon Jovi fan. Right. So, you know, for me, as, as we talk about this album, it'll be interesting to see because, I, you know, for me, I was there. Loving that album from day one. You came in maybe a year or two later. You know, certainly, you know, around that slippery when wet time period, you were certainly a Bon Jovi fan. But um, it'll be interesting to see as we talk about these records and, and kind of reminisce about these songs a little bit where we both stand. But mm -hmm. before we do that, I always like to kind of give a little taste of what it was like in the time period when these albums came out, when we're doing a look back, right? So I went back and just looked, you know, what else was going on in 1984 at the time period that this album came out? Well, clearly we know Van Halen's 1984 album was all over the friggin' radio. That was probably the biggest album in terms of rock that year. You had mm -hmm. Metallica Ride the Lightning coming out. You had Rats Out of the Cellar coming out. Scorpions would love it first thing, right? That was, you know, a big album for them. Twisted Sister would stay hungry. Docking with, as we would call it, Tooth and Toenail. Yes, I know it's Tooth and Nail, but we would say Tooth and Toenail. <laughs> the debut Wasp album. Um, what is it? White Snake would slide it in. Obviously, if I, I could turn back, <laughs> um, Sammy Hagar's VOA, mm. Quiet Riot, Condition Critical. So it was really like to me, you could start to see like that whole 80s metal scene starting to come together at that moment. You know, whether it's Metallica just starting, some of those other bands that the, the earlier mm. ones, the Rats, the Twisted Sisters, the Quiet Riots are starting to put out their first albums or their second albums. To me, it was really an exciting, exciting time for, for rock music. And it was just the mm -hmm. start 
of what that whole eighties rock scene was going to be right when this Bon Jovi album was first coming out. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And again, you know, you start naming all those records. I'm like, man, I mean, I wasn't just kidding <laughs> when I was singing, if I could turn back time, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's, and it's and great, I skipped over. So, I mean, yeah. Dio last in line, you have Iron Maidens, uh, power slave. I mean, this you great go record. on and on yeah. and a bunch of great. And then on the pop side, I'd like to mention the pop side because Bon Jovi kind of straddles that rock and the pop. On the pop mm -hmm. side, you have Prince's Purple Rain, Madonna's mm -hmm. Like a Virgin, uh, Unforgettable Fire, U2, which could kind of go rock, I guess. Born in the USA yeah. is probably one of the biggest albums of the year, right? Again, that's like mm -hmm. a rock, and it certainly had crossover appeal. But there's a lot of rock music, both in the hard rock, heavy metal, hair metal, whatever you want to call it, side. Mm -hmm. and, and then pop radio. is. I mean, there's just a lot of great music coming out at this time. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. and i look at all of those different artists and bands and i'm like you know bon jovi's sound kind of fits in perfect for right there you know at that time period it really you think of those opening keyboard sounds on on runaway and if a song like that came out now it would sound probably a little dated obviously but in 1984 man that was exactly what people were listening to and exactly what people like to hear mm -hmm. yeah. yeah absolutely Absolutely. Yes. But go, go but on. one of the things I want to touch upon very, you know, yeah. on the onset is this, you know, Bon Jovi to me, and I remember even getting some slack back in the day, were always like, they were like, you know, well, they're not really a metal band and all oh, they're, and I don't want to describe some of the words that they were, you, you know, described yep. as, yep. you know. Um, so, you know, I, it was interesting listening to this record and then reevaluating some of those mm. comments I used to hear, you know, yeah. so to, because I guess, what you just said some of it a lot of it is aligned with a lot of the other stuff yeah, yeah there's some more poppier stuff like she don't know me and stuff like that yeah. you know but yeah. um but there are some other tunes on here that kind of fit alongside a lot of those other records that you, I agree. That you mentioned I maybe agree. not a dio record or maybe not metallica but you know but some that's why ones. i give like the whole breadth of albums that are coming out because it to me and you said it perfect it fits in with those other albums whether mm -hmm. it's condition critical out of the mm -hmm. cellar i mean it fits in with that type of stuff to me yes mm -hmm. bon jovi had a little bit more keyboards but you certainly are not going to mistake in the bon jovi album and those other albums of coming out in 1994 let's just say you know mm -hmm. they all of, of that time period and bon jovi to me fit in perfect but that's also why i mentioned some of the pop oh. albums because they really straddled both sides to me and the bottom line is, do you really want every band to be a Motley Crue, a Dokken, or this and that? Is like have the individuality of, of every band that's actually good because it caters to different audiences. I wouldn't yes. want every record to sound like a Dio record or Metallica record or no. Def Leppard or whoever, you know? Agreed. So Fully agree. Yeah. So, so to me, again, I always look back in this time as an exciting time of music. And this was right around the time when I was really starting to get into music, you know, I always say mm -hmm. this, obviously Kiss was my first band. Ozzy mm -hmm. was my second because I went to see Ozzy. I saw Motley Crue open up for them. So Motley Crue was my third. And then right around this time period, because I saw Ozzy in January of 84. And I always say Motley Crue is my third band and, and Bon Jovi must've been like my fourth or fifth band that I started to really listen to as a kid where I said, mm -hmm. Hey, I like this band. Right. So for me, Bon Jovi is always rooted in those like early days of my music fans. I'm, mm-hmm yeah so saying that do we want to take a look back at this album kind of go track by track and give our ratings and thoughts and comments on it absolutely so like i'll just say for people who maybe haven't seen these episodes in the past we rate on a scale of zero to ten i don't think any of us uh, either of us has ever given a zero would be curious if one day we do but a 10 is perfection think of the mm -hmm. best song you've ever heard in your life that is a 10 we always say anything like a seven or greater, you start to get into really good songs, the upper echelon as you get a little bit higher. Five is average. So there's nothing wrong with a five rating. Five is in the middle. There's a lot that's better. There's a lot that's worse. So we keep that in mind because I think a lot of people have a tendency to say everything's a nine or a 10. And that's not what we are I'm quite sure about to do, right? I don't think every song on this album well, we're both going to say is a nine or a 10. Well, and the other thing I wanted to mention was, and when I thought about this, because normally we do rate Kiss records, yeah. is that if I give a Deuce a 10 and I give something on this album a 10, that doesn't mean they're equals. <laughs> this, okay. is in the, this is in the scope of this album. Right. Okay, yeah. that's so my ratings and my scores, I'm not comparing it to anybody. So if, if somebody were to say, well, how could you give this song, a, you know, an eight or nine and give the, mm -hmm. you know, no, I, I'm, that's when the, then, 
the rating of this album from one to ten. Not there comparing it to you know a Beatles record. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Right. So I'll, why and, don't and I. And I'll say right off the back, there's no yesterdays on this record. So there's no yesterdays on this record. I, okay, as yeah. much as I personally like Bon Jovi better than the Beatles, that's not to say yeah. Bon Jovi is better. I know they're not. Right. Okay. Right. But I agree. There's no yesterday yeah. on this record. <laughs> you know, right. so, yeah. so I would agree with that. So, yeah. and then and you could probably listen to another 30 yeah. or 40 Beatles songs and say this one, there's no Bon Jovi yes. song equal to that right. either. But I'm, and that comes from somebody who's a Bon Jovi fan. But mm -hmm. all right. I'm going to let you start first. Runaway, the mm. first song. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, for that, as I just said, for this record, this is an absolute 10 for me. I mean, this record, this song, I've covered it many times, never get tired of it. It's, it's you know, to me, it's like absolute perfection of, of you know, your rock pop song. It's got yeah. all the elements, great chorus fantastic guitar solo i mean not, i know richie didn't play on this one mm -hmm. um mr tim pierce did mm -hmm. and um just what a great song you know just and i think if i remember correctly uh members of was the e street band or someone played on this record <sighs> I don't know. I, I just know I, that I, there's I nobody that from the actual Bon Jovi band that's on this song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it goes yeah, back to so, what I was saying, how I knew this song before there was yeah, a band. Roy Bitten or Batan, whatever. He's, mm -hmm. I think he was the keyboard player with Springsteen. Okay. Um, or maybe just one. So, you know. Right. But anyways, good. No, that's, so that's I mean, my... look, it was some of the success that this song was having outside of there being an album and getting some radio airplay in New York and New Jersey that led to John forming the band, which is why there's none of these guys, you know, there's no Dave, there's no Richie, there's no Alec, or not that he was on all their songs anyway. There's no Tico, right? So um, mm -hmm. that's why there's all different musicians because this really is a song that John recorded prior to there being a band. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so you're giving it a solid 10. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with a, a little bit lower than that. Um, I, I gave it a nine, obviously still a very high rating. There's something that was always a little off to me on this that didn't make it perfect. And I can't tell you what it is. I hated the fade out at the end of the song always, which is why I love that they did. I, I sent it to you, a, what, a month or two ago, where mm -hmm. um, there was like the extended guitar solo ending that they just mm -hmm. recently released. There's something about the fade out on this really always annoyed me. It just seemed like it happened so abrupt. <laughs> like the song just ended all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it's, I've always thought it was a great probably song. Probably for but, radio airplay. Probably for yeah, radio probably, airplay. Probably, but there's something that always just, I felt like this was really, really good, but there was always, even from day one, something missing from, from me calling it quote unquote perfection. Mm -hmm. Saying yeah. that a nine is still a very high rating, but but I just I couldn't go with a ten. I just I said, could I? Could I? I said, nah, I can't. I said nine and a half. Nah, I'm gonna go nine. Hmm. Okay. Right. And and I know I know I'm gonna insult you right now. You're keeping track of our scores. Oh, am I? Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, oh, that's... I was waiting for you to say, come on, what is this? Uh, the first time I'm doing this? What is this? <laughs> amateur hour? Like I don't know <laughs> exactly. the routine by now. <laughs> exactly. Hello. Like, oh man. Okay. All right. Well, obviously, we're both giving that song very high ratings. And it's look, mm -hmm. it's it's an all-time Bon Jovi classic, right? So all right. Next up, roulette. I'm gonna let you go first again on this one. Because I so this is what I love about this. We haven't spoke about this, and I don't know where you're going to land on these songs. And I have a feeling we're going to be a few different ones here. But where do you stand on roulette? So uh, another thing I wanted to just mention is like these. The, this could be like the stock market. I could listen to these songs. I hadn't listened to a lot of these songs <laughs> uh -huh. in a long time. I'll be honest. Okay. But these 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 numbers could fluctuate. Okay. On, yeah, on some of, of these songs for sure. You know. But yeah, roulette. I gave this a I, um a solid six. Okay. I think I think it's a bit, you know, five is a good song, you know. It's, it's, five it's, is average, right? When I say average, I don't mean like average. Eh, it's not that good. Average, is like, eh, you're like halfway there, man. You know, right. you're living, living on a prayer. without a prayer, <laughs> without a prayer. Without a prayer without... Yeah. So I, I, um, yeah, I really, I, I kind of really dug this tune. You know, mm. I was like, you know, I hadn't listened to this song in a long time, and mm. I said, yeah, I give this a solid six. Okay. It's funny because I just spoke about before eventually buying that album in 1984 mm -hmm. and i knew the song run away i knew she don't know me and i knew love lies because it was the flip side of run away so i get the album on and i'm like i have three songs i already know i like out of nine this is going to be a great album the second song comes on and i'm like huh 
what? Mm. <laughs> Back then, it didn't connect with me. I listened to the record again, just to kind of refresh myself. Although I do listen to it every few years, and I'm still like, <sighs> weak song as a second song on the album for me. There's so many songs on this album I like better. Um, mm. I'm going to go with a four and a half on this. I just have never connected with this song. I stand by the fact that I don't know why this is in the second slot on the album. It kind of, I remember that feeling again in the record and just being like, oh no, maybe I've already heard the best songs on this album, which turned out mm. not to be the case, but Roulette has never connected with me for 40 years and still doesn't. Four so you and gave a this a what? Four and a half? 4.5, yes. A little less okay. than average. Not horrible, but um, still below average song to me. And I know a lot of fans that like old Bon Jovi point to this as one of the songs they like. I just, mm. not me. Is that that song? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, that was one of the songs I was like, oh, this is a, it's a pretty cool, like heavier, you know, heavier riff right. on this, you know, that's, yeah. yeah. Never liked it. Never connected with it. Um, mm. I remember having it, I buying a, one of the 45s from, I think, 7,800. 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think a live version of Roulette was the flip side. I was like, oh, maybe I like the live version. Eh, don't like that either. <laughs> so, mm. Four and a half. Four okay. and a half. All right. Next up, the second song I, I knew from the record that I saw the video on MTV, She Don't Know Me. You know, before we give our ratings and talk about this, I'm sure you realize this at this point, but many fans didn't know this. You you realize that this is a cover tune, right? Uh, yes. Okay. It's actually the only song, as far as I know, unless one of the last couple of albums um, is different, it's the only song in the entire Bon Jovi catalog not written by John and or Richie. Um, I don't care that it's a cover tune. As far as I'm concerned, it was a Bon Jovi song, right? So I, I looked it up. There's actually, Bon Jovi was the fourth band to record wow. the song. Um, wow. there, there was a band called Fair Warning. That was the first one that recorded it. The album never came out. It was only available in promo copies. Then the version most people know before Bon Jovi was the Grassroots recorded it. Then Peter Emmett recorded it. And then John Bon, jo bon Jovi recorded it. All within like a year and a half time period. All four of them recorded it. And in fact, I was reading something on the internet that the joke at the time was, if you want a band to die, just have them call record She Don't Know Me, which is wow. pretty funny. <laughs> you know, but... um. It's a good song. And, you know, if you go back and you can find all those other versions on YouTube, I actually looked. Um, all the other versions are good. You know, there's nothing that I'm like, oh, wow, that, that version's a clunker. I think Bon Jovi had the best version of those four. Um, I think it was probably a good follow up single for them because it has that radio appeal to me. Um, it's a song that even to this day, I enjoy. I I'm going to give it a solid eight. Okay. Well, I always thought for years that this was on the soundtrack for, for Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, it really? sounds like that's that's the song <laughs> that belongs on that on that okay. soundtrack. If you if you're familiar, and I've seen that movie a lot, um, it just feels like that that song should have been a part of that movie. Hmm. And I think Fast Times came out in around eighty five, eighty six. If I'm correct, sounds about that, right. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, that this song belongs on that record. They should have put it on it. anyway. <laughs> they well, should have put it on it. Actually, it was 82. What am I saying? I think really, time, but it, yeah, okay. Um, but um, still should put it on there, even though the song didn't exist yet. <laughs> <laughs> they should have re released the soundtrack and put it on just for you. <laughs> we filmed the whole movie. Oh, everybody get back. <laughs> so get back. Benjamin said this needs to be on the soundtrack. Get back. <laughs> get, get back in the pool. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, but yeah, I gave this, I love this song, mm -hmm. and what I what I love about this song, and I gave it an eight and a half. I give okay. it a point five more than you. I love the chorus where, like, John says a line, and the and the, and you got the vocal, yeah, you know, the harmonies going. Mm -hmm. I always love that, you know, that got to tell, got to tell, da, 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 uh -huh. da, da. I just always love that songwriting style. I just thought yeah. it was really, really cool. And and I know, and I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it yet. That I I think I said more recently that Bon Jovi was one of my you know top. So oh, I was going to influences. mention it after we got through yeah. the nine songs, but yes, go oh, ahead. Okay, no, no, okay. mention so, it now. Go ahead. No, so so um there are certain things that I when I listened to this record, I was like, oh shit, I stole that. I, I, <laughs> I realized I was just like, but um yeah, no, I, I love this song. I I I I just think it's a 
you know, I, I was like, you know, this is like a perfect pop song in some ways. Maybe not 10 when I say perfect, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying it's a Jesse's Girl of Summer 69 because those are like 10s, you know what I mean? Right. But it's kind of right a couple of notches under there or a notch and a half, you want to say mm -hmm. one and a half, you know. I, I just think this could have been a, a big hit. Yeah. Uh, if maybe if Bon Jovi was more known or the Bon Jovi of 86, right. you know. Well, you know, to me, the funny thing is you're mentioning how Bon Jovi impacted your songwriting and all of that, and how you've stole certain things from his songwriting <laughs> style. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's what all songwriters borrow, do. Borrow, borrow. It's, borrow. It's, what, it's what all songwriters do, right? But mm -hmm. I want to just make sure that when you're putting together your next bio, that you say influences Beatles, this one, that one, and that you put in there Mark Avsack. Okay, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> since, since he's obviously the songwriter of the yeah, song. Yeah. So yeah. your next bio, I want to make sure I see that in there, okay? All right, you got it. And you I think people will be like, Mark who? <laughs> what the yeah, hell? It, so, exactly, but, exactly. Um, it's it's still, to me, it's a great Bon Jovi song, even though it is a cover. It's it, it's a Bon Jovi song in my mind. And I, I bet you if mm -hmm. you ask 99.9% .9 of the people in the planet that the notice song, they're going to say, it's a Bon Jovi song. Right. They, mm -hmm. they don't see it as a cover. So, all right. Next up on the album, then, Shot Through the Heart. So I'll go first on this one. Go, no, you want to say something? No, 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 go ahead. No, oh, no. you know, this is a song, again, you know, having, you know, bought the album pretty much when it first came out, I always loved from day one. I can't hear this song and the title of this song hmm. without remembering the first time I heard this song two years later, You Give Love a Bad Name. And the song, You Give Love a Bad Name, started and Shot Through the Heart. And I'm like, Wait a second. They already have a song called Shot Through the Heart. What did they do? All they right. wrote another song called Shot Through the Heart. Um, it was just, it was such a confusing moment for me as a Bon Jovi fan. The first time I heard You Give Love a Bad Name. Dare I say, I actually like this better than You Give Love a Bad Name. <laughs> okay. I like the original Shot Through the Heart more than the second Shot Through the Heart. <laughs> okay. Mm. And yes, I know it's not the real title of the second one. Yeah. Um, this is a song I've always loved. To me, it's one of the best ones on the album. I contemplated actually giving it a higher rating than Runaway. And I'm like, mm, Runaway is such a classic. So I, I went with an 8.7 on this one. Um, wow. Just a touch lower. It's still, even when I re listen to the record again, I'm like, Man, what a great friggin' song. Um, 8.7. And I stand by that. I think just a great friggin' song. Well, I mean, I think it's above average. I gave it a 5.8. Again, mm. this is part of the stock market yeah. songs. Yeah. I no, but I, this is what I love is that because when we do Kiss Ones, you and I, we know mm. we're almost always in sync. I mm. had a feeling we were going to be a little disconnected on yeah. some of these, and that's good. And I, and I think you have a more intimate listenership with some of these songs that i had you know yes. i listened to this album and these songs probably three times for this for this episode mm -hmm. that's why i didn't give it one listen i said let me give it three listens mm -hmm. my lucky number mm -hmm. we have three listens but you know again i was like okay first sol oh great songs oh solid song oh great so i'm like oh i was like all right i'm enjoying this record right away i'm like wow it kind of took me back but also made me realize that this is a pretty so far damn good debut album yes. you know yep Yep. Okay. A lot of deep cuts, if you will, on the record, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like mm -hmm. these songs were performed all through the 80s mm -hmm. and 90s in concert. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's solid, a solid album. But um, all right, I'm standing mm -hmm. by my 8.7. What did you say yours was a five what? 5.8. 5.8. All right, still above average. So we both think mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good song. Um, all right, next up, Love Lies. You want to go first? Yeah. Yeah, the, this this to me was the 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 weakest song on the record for me. Mm -hmm. Um, not a bad song. I gave it a 5.2. I gave it a little mm -hmm. bit, but when I say the weakest song and I'm giving it a 5.2, that's right. still a pretty damn that's good, good song. Right. I good. mean, it's obviously the softest song, ballad-ish, if you want to yeah. call it, but it's not really a ballad. It kind of sad. It's more like a, a salad, like a, you know? You know? <laughs> salad. You know? Like a mid-tempo type thing. Yeah. Good chorus, whatever, but I was like, all right, you know, this is good. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it was like the weakest song for me, but right. still solid tune. Okay. Well, like I said before, this was actually the second song I knew off of the album. Of course, it was the flip side of Runaway. Mm -hmm. um, I always liked it as the B side of the song. You know, I always enjoyed it. It was part of what one of the, I guess, the three songs that made me a Bon Jovi fan, that being Runaway, Love Lies, and She Don't Know Me. Those are the three songs that made me a Bon Jovi fan. I've always liked this one. Um, it, to me, it is far from the worst song on the album. There's a few that are worse than this one. I went with a six and a half. Okay. All right. All right. Let's flip the record over 
to the second side breakout. Why don't you go first, my friend? I feel like this is going to be a far. This is one of the ones that you're going to say is, is is worse on the on the record for you. Well, let's but, see. We're, I'm letting you go first. Let's see. So, so this was one tune where and and I I knew even something when I did on the Dex's record that I did like a backing vocal thing and I said it was I forgot if it was roulette. It wound up being breakout mm-hmm. that was influenced. But when I listened to breakout, I literally back in the day there was a song I did. It was called All That I Need. And there was a backing vocal that went, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and then when I heard this, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. I was like, man, did I just talk? <laughs> I just like, and I don't even know what the t- I didn't purposely say I'm going to do it, but it must have been in my head. And, you know, whenever I wrote that song, 19 years old. Right. But I, you know, I'm going to give this song a 6.2 in this. It has like an intimate, like sort of, yeah. you know, I think it's a cool tune. I love the, you know, the chorus is great. And I'm 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 actually padding it a little bit because mm-hmm. of this thing, you know, yeah, for right. me. But that's you know? okay. But sometimes yeah, that's so what I'm... music is. You connect with things, it brings you yeah. back to a certain thing in your childhood. And that's what music's all about yeah. to me. So there's nothing yeah. wrong with padding it for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm giving this a six point two. Okay. Well, you're you're somewhat right. I agree that this with your comment before that this is definitely one of the songs that's worse than love lies on the record for yeah. me um it's one of my bottom echelon songs on the record saying that it's not bad and, and that whole whoa 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 part that, that you were just singing and i'm not going to try to sing it the way you do um Thank probably God. raises my rating a little bit because if that wasn't there i think this would be below average song to be honest mm-hmm. with you um i went with a 5.1 on this just a tinge okay. above I, I couldn't go five i had to go 5.1 um it's kind of funny because i think back to like the bootlegs i had at that time and you know again songs like shot through the heart and and one or two others on the record were my favorites yet always in concert they were playing Mm. roulette breakout even when we saw them on the slippery when wet tour breakout was one of the holdovers from this and i remember if you remember we were so disappointed that they didn't do um only lonely from the fahrenheit Mm -hmm. album Yet they did break out, right? So this is a song that obviously in their early days they really liked and they connected with. Um, mm-hmm. For me, it was just always just a very average song. I don't know, five point one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Right? So next up, then, "Burning for Love." I'll go first on this one. This is another one like "Shot Through the Heart" that I always loved. One of my favorites on the album. I, I guess something about those a little bit more like up tempo type songs, which is you know, to me both "Shot Through the Heart" and "Burning for Love" is a little bit more up to i don't know how many beats per minute if you want to get into that kind of discussion but you know it's a little bit more up tempo than a breakout or a roulette and and that's really what i like this was always i could say probably my favorite song on the record even though i'm not going to rate it as high as runaway um Mm. simply because runaway is an all-time classic but um burning for love i always loved i'm gonna go with an 8.6 on this one nice okay yeah well, I, I I like the song a lot too. I'm not oh, going okay. nearly as high as that. Mm-hmm. Um, I gave it a six and a half um, okay. for this rating. Again, this could be a song that I could probably go to a seven. To be quite honest. Yep. You know, I love the do 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 da da do do. Like I love the intro. You know, melody. Then it's got the boom, <laughs> that little bass thing in there. You know, you've been um, mistreated. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I think this is, and I love the four on the floor feel and the choruses, mm-hmm. you know, the more I talk about it, the more I could push it to a seven, you know, yeah. um, I, 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 you know, I, I, she don't know me. I gave it really high. I gave it like an eight and a half. And now I'm thinking about this. I am actually going to change this to a seven. All right. Yay. Well, wait, let me think about this. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to change it to a 7.1. Ooh, a 7.1. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's that. a great song. It's a it great. Is. This is another song that I think could have been a big hit. You know, if it wasn't yes. Bon Jovi, unknown band, basically. Um, I, I think it's a you know that's a re- very well written pop tune. Yes. You know, if I was going to, a lot of fans wish that Bon Jovi would do some stuff from their first two albums besides mm. Runaway. Mm-hmm. This might very well be the song if they were put into a fan vote. This might be the song yeah. I would choose from the first two albums. Either this or maybe Silent yeah. Night from from the second album. Um, but I, I just love this song. And I remember you loving it from back in the day too. Yeah. I actually do remember. Like I, yep. I, it's funny when I see certain songs, I remember the songs that you used to get really thawed about. Yes, and, yep. and this uh-huh. one, I was like, it was a throw in for him. Yes, I remember. Th- this yeah. was a throw in for me. Absolutely. So, all right, come back. Why don't you go first, my friend? I think there's another great song. This is, mm-hmm. this is, and, and, uh, and 
And that's, I actually have the song as a seven. That's why I said Burning for Love is 7.1. <laughs> yeah, I said, that, yeah. a little, little match, you know. Uh -huh. I, just, I love the, you know, come back, 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 mm -hmm. back, back, back. And then the, like the way the guitar follows the chorus. And, yep. and again, I think there's a, it's got great hook in the chorus. I mean, this that's the thing about this record when I realize it's got like so many good hooks. It's not like, there's, there's no, as you would say, boring cold gin song, even though I'm not saying cold gin is boring. There's no real boring songs on this record. I was like, and we're at, we're at the eighth maybe, song maybe right roulette, now. maybe roulette for me. Roulette well, is this you. album's cold gin. Yeah, few, but I I still think, I still think. I mean, it never resonated for you, and it's right. not going to probably ever. I still think it's a a pretty solid chorus, you know. Um, but anyways, we've already covered the roulette tracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, come back. I I I think is a great song, and a, and a, and and I gave it a seven. Yeah. You know, this is a song that I always liked, didn't love, but I did like it. And when I went back and did my homework and re-listened to it, I'm like, this song has aged well. Yeah, This song mm -hmm. I actually might like more now than I did in the 80s, which is, uh, I don't, I can't say why, but it's, it's like you said, it's got a good hook. It's, it's just, it's catchy, you know, for a band that was on their first album and not well known, there's a lot of really good material on this album that, you know, the fans who came on in 86 and later and didn't give these albums mm -hmm. a listen really should go back mm -hmm. and, and listen to this stuff because there's a lot of good stuff on this. I'm going to go with a 6.6 .6 on this one. 6.6. The, num the number of the comeback. <laughs> I said the number that's not the number, the number that's, that's not, not the, beast. the beast. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I said the number that is come back. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I love the ending comeback. Bring your love and back, back to back to me. Come back. Yeah. I just think that that whole that whole outro is really cool too. Agreed. And you know, again, thinking back to a lot of the bootlegs I have, I think for whatever reason, this is a song I don't recall them doing many times in concert. Hmm. Um, the other songs on the record, I, I I know I have you know live versions. This one, and I could be wrong. Somebody could correct me. Oh, in Chicago in 1984, they did it. But I don't recall hmm. this being a concert staple at that time, which is a shame because it's a, it's a really good song to me. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. And that now we get to the final track on the record. Come on, come on. Get ready. Get ready, want, get ready. Why don't you go first, my friend? So this was a song when I first heard it, uh, you know, I hadn't really remembered it, quite honest, okay. you know. And when I heard it the first time, listening, I was like, oh. And I heard it the second time, I was like, hmm. The third time, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know. So, so it actually And, went and up next in week the, you're going to be covering it in your band, it sounds like. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I'll be ripping it off on another song I write. There you go. Um, yeah, I like the song a lot. I, I think what I really like, and I had to actually check it because the guitar solo, I'm like, oh, Richie Sambor didn't play this one. Hmm. I felt like it was another guitar player. Okay. You know, I, there's certain things when I hear Richie Sambor do, it's like, oh, that's Richie Sambor, you know. Sure. But this solo, I thought, stood out in a way that it wasn't Richie. And then I had to come back and listen, unless it was never credited, you know, which is possible. Which is possible. I know, I know to Tim Pierce, and I went back and I looked and, you know, um, I looked on Wikipedia, but... I thought the guitar solo was really cool. I liked the chorus. Um, I just really thought it was a solid song. I, I, solid song, so I gave it a six. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is one again when we saw them on the Slippery When Wet tour that was a holdover that they were still mm -hmm. doing at that time. Um, so it's a song, obviously. Yeah, I don't remember that, that at all. Yeah, I don't yeah. In fact, if I remember right, I think it was one of the encores, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it was a song that to I which think I that, probably went like this. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I think we were still like, where's only lonely? Where's only yeah, yeah. lonely? But um, yeah, yeah. if I remember right, it, it might have been the the song that closed the set that night. Uh, I'd have to go back and look. I did not look that up before we chatted here. Well, it kind of it um, kind of has that kind of feel to it, you yeah, know. It's, yeah. Well, you you, know. you should you should double check me on this, right? I look up Bon Jovi set list. I think the concert was April seventh, nineteen eighty seven, Nassau Coliseum. Um, so literally April. what April seventh, I think. It was 1987, okay. and I'm fairly certain, if I remember right, they closed Na the show. With that's Nassau Colosseum. That's when Nassau Colosseum. Yes, is that when we got Whiplash? That's that's the infamous night of Whiplash. Yeah, when my father got creamed from behind from another car. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes, yes. It was the last song. It was the last song. Yeah. So it's funny how things just like stick in I my mean, mind, and I was right on the date also, right, April 7th. Yes. Look at that. Why I remember that. Go 16 ahead. songs and one is pink flamingos i mean mm -hmm. i mean these bands were doing like and, and one was a cover drift away i yes. hardly played anything that night it was I mean, and you and know why because a lot of these songs these bands like bullshitted way too much like well that's what i was just gonna say well if you re play to God when, God. when he introduced living on a prey he spoke for like five minutes oh, wait a second oh wait i, I sorry to interrupt you again the 16 songs 
One is Drift Away. One is a drum solo. One is a guitar yeah. solo. One is Pink Flamingos. So right. that's four. So <laughs> what did they play? 12 songs? Yes. And Silent Night that they did that night, it was like a 12 or 13 minute version. Yeah, which I could have done without. Right, which I love that song, but I, I didn't yeah, but love I that. Don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's because by this time, obviously, Slippery was a huge album. Not many people knew these first two albums, like we've mentioned a few times. So they didn't play many songs from those first two albums, which to me was a shame because, again, I think these albums were really good. I don't think I ever gave my rate my rating for Get Ready. I'm going to say it was like a 5.5 to me. I think the strongest okay. songs on the album, but it, it's, a, it's a nice way to end the record. Um, mm -hmm. I clearly remember them doing it in concert and closing the concert with it. Um, I do wish that Bon Jovi had opened up that show for Kiss on the Animalize. So I would have loved to see Bon Jovi mm. support of this album and, and see, you know, six or seven of these songs live. Um, yeah. It's, you know, it's when people talk about great debut albums, the first Bon Jovi album is never in the discussion. And I'm not suggesting that it should be, but song for song, it's a solid album. I mean, it's nine songs. I wish it was another song. I wish it was 10, like most albums were. For me, eight of the nine songs, I rated above average, right? But that being five or greater. And I think you're you're nine for nine, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, for mm -hmm. average or above average, right? So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a really solid debut album. To me, you could see the start of how they were going to become who they were two years later, mm -hmm. right? The songwriting mm -hmm. is there to me, so... It's, it's just a, a great album. So what was the overall, do you have the average for me and the average for you? Yeah, my average is 61.8 and yours is 62.5. Well, so that's definitely not the average. That's the totals. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. My average I thought rating you is the 61. <laughs> sorry. I, but but you should that should be mentioned, though. Yes. Yes, it should. So what was yours? Was You rated it slightly higher than me? Did I hit it right? I don't like, I don't like your attitude, Brun. That's well, you know. Yes, I was my average is six point eight seven, six point eight six seven, which is rounds off to six point nine, basically. Yeah, that's a, that's right? a high rating, yeah. And yours is six point nine four four four, which is six point nine. So basically, basically, it was six point nine if you look at it that way. And think about when we started this, we said that a, a good song is anything seven. You know, a really good song is anything seven or greater. So we're right on that cusp of saying that this is a song for song a really good album right that's mm -hmm. seven or greater and um i think that to me those overall ratings make sense and i kind of again think back to that time period in 1984 with with the van hannah albums and the rats and and wasp and all of those and um maybe with the exception of wasp and i guess van halen's 1984 this is the album i would go to before i would go to even out of the cellar even stay hungry which was a huge album and i'm not saying that these are bad albums but I personally would rather listen to the debut Bon Jovi album over Out of the Cellar. And I know probably most people when they watch this are going to say, oh, you're nuts. Out of the Cellar is a classic. That's just how much I really love this debut Bon Jovi album. Am I wrong? I mean, you could say I'm wrong and you disagree, but, you know. Okay, so you Out of the Cellar or this record? Out of the Cellar or this record, yeah. Oh, this record. This record. Okay. This record or Stay Hungry. That's tough. You know, I, I kind of have a soft spot for that record for okay. a couple of reasons. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the presence of I Wanna Rock and, and We're Not Gonna Taste on, on MTV it was just true. And the I price mean, is just, an amazing song. I the think. price, yeah. I mean it's got yeah. and uh Stay Hungry is a great song. Yeah, that's a great it's album. A great, it's, a, it's a great record. Maybe it's we'll have to do a different. look back on that and see how overall ratings compare to Yeah, this. let's do that. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Yeah. Bon Jovi or Tooth and, and Nail, which one? I got to listen to the Tooth and Nail record, quite honestly. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I probably would pick this record. Me you know, too. Without going back and listening. Debut how about Bon Jovi. I was going to talk about this record or around the same time, Shout at the Devil. I'd probably say Shout at the Devil. Yeah. yeah that was 83, Shout at the Devil. Like you said, around right. the same time. But I'd probably yeah. go Shout at the Devil. I mean, that's just, that's yeah. a great record. I yeah. was going to say less comparison for us. This record or Kisses Animal Eyes? Oof. Man, I'm going to probably get flamed by KISS fans about this one if I answer this honestly. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you it's not even close, this record. Yeah. So, I mean, so I'll, I'll take again, the I'm heat. Going, I'm going through, the, I'm going through the, the track, you know. I'll, I'll take the, the heat. The, I, I think side two of Analyze is very weak. And there's no burn, bitch, burn on this album. Um, yeah. Even Roulette that I rated, what, 4.5? I would say that's better than burn, bitch, burn. Um, Murder in High Heels. Yeah, terrible. While the City Sleeps. Same. Crap. 
there's there's no songs like that on yeah, this. Uh, and it's funny yeah. both both albums are nine songs <laughs> so that's right. kind of, you know but uh and i saw let's just say if heaven's on fire and runaway is a wash right there but they're equal i think yeah. there's more higher ranking songs on this you know shot through the heart burning for love she don't know me than well, i find on the kiss album by far this is a totally consistent record from yes. top to bottom and exactly. obviously you just named a couple of shit burgers exactly like an animalized so you know. exactly and that and that's exactly my point but yeah i'll be curious to see the viewers the listeners what do they think of this record um do they and if you it? haven't listened to it because it's bon jovi yeah, go uh, back and listen to it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Go back and listen to it. Go back and listen and, and to really it. Really give it a give it a real listen. You know, yeah. to me, whether it's a song like um, even "Break Out," "Shot Through the Heart," "Burn of Love," they're just great '80s rock songs. You know, yeah. um, so yeah. like you said, get ready, come back, go back and listen to it. There's a lot of good material, but I'm curious to see what do people who are watching and listening think of the record. Um, what are your ratings song by song kind of use the same scale that we're using so it, it can be comparable um, some of those comparisons I did at the end I'd love to see what other people think how does this record mm. compare to some of those other classic albums from the, the 1984 time period and um, when did you guys get into Bon Jovi when did you first you know start to you know, learn about their music when did you learn about this album was it in 84 was it when they became more popular in 86 um, I'm curious when other people started to get into this to this band and i should also mention and then we'll wrap here this record is also the only record that's not um credited to david bryan on keyboards david rashbaum yes <laughs> which i remember and, when he changed his name i was like all right good i can't pronounce that thing anyway <laughs> and tico torres the, the hitman hit <laughs> i remember that as soon Classic. as he started saying it i'm like i think it says the hitman on it yeah. it does yeah yeah and actually, Hugh McDonald was credited on this record. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that Huey I... McDonald. Huey. Yes. I mean, it's well, obviously, it's known fact that he's on the record, but he didn't realize he had a, an actual credit there. Yeah. Nice. Deservingly so. Yeah. Hmm. Management was, at the time, Doc McGee. There you go. <laughs> Amazing what that guy touched in the 80s. Everything turned to gold. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, I think that's it on this one. I think we're going to be doing a couple of other Bon Jovi episodes. So hopefully everybody's watching and listening to this enjoyed this. I think next time we'll do another record. And I think we're gonna have to talk about that documentary once that's out. Um, I'm looking forward to that at the end of the month. And um, to me, April 2024 is the month of Bon Jovi. Cool. But here we spoke about January 1984, 40 years ago, the debut Bon Jovi album. We look forward to hearing your comments, your feedback, your thoughts. On that note, what are you bringing out today? <laughs> double Ringo. <laughs> I'll keep it simple for you. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Talk to you soon. All righty. There you have it. We look forward to reading and hearing your thoughts and your comments on the Bon Jovi debut album. What songs are your favorites? And how do you think it compares to other albums that came out during that year? We look forward to hearing your thoughts. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You could also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.